You know, this is Emissary Ingress self-service APIs in the Kubernetes Gateway API. I'm Lance Austin, uh, a principal engineer at Ambassador Labs. I'm Flynn. I'm a technical evangelist at Buoyant. I used to be at Ambassador Labs, but not anymore. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go over a little bit of an intro, a little recap on what's happened since KubeCon uh, Detroit in the fall, and then talk a little bit about self-service configuration, and then jump into some stuff about Gateway API. So quick, quick show of hands. Who here is completely new to MS Area Ingress? All right, I guess we're doing the full intro. <laughs> so if you have not run across MS Area Ingress before, it's an API gateway. That means you've got your Kubernetes cluster, you have users out somewhere in the internet. Emissary's function is to sit between those two and provide access for the people out in the world to interact with services in your cluster. It is an open source, cloud native, developer centric, opinionated, self service API gateway. There will be a quiz, but we'll come back to that later, don't worry. Uh, it's a CNCF incubating project. We donated it in. 2021, 2020, something like that. It's been with the CNCF for a little while. It's powered by Envoy. What this basically boils down to is that we use Envoy to wrangle all of your data, and then we use Emissary to wrangle the Envoy. Since it is an API gateway, one of its core functions is traffic management. So if you've got Jane out in the cloud and she wants to request a quote from the quote of the moment service, then Emissary will go through and accept that request and route it through to one of the workloads. If Mark asked for the quote of the moment, Mark may end up talking to a different instance of that workload, but yeah, this is all okay. API gateways are not just proxies, though. They get to do a bunch of other things. So in particular, app security is a big one, where maybe Jane is allowed to update a quote, but Mark is not allowed to update a quote. And Emissary gives you a place where you can put that functionality in one place, manage it for everybody in one place and not have to worry about all of your application developers getting it right every time in the applications themselves. There are a bunch of other things that can happen here. There's stuff that Emissary does about observability. It can do rate limiting. It gives you a bunch of resilience features. It can do things that make it easier to develop your apps entirely. Um, we're not gonna go over this whole slide, but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff baked into this. Overall, it is a API gateway. But more importantly, it is a self-service, opinionated developer-centric API gateway. We'll be coming back to that in a little bit, but first I'm gonna hand it over and let Lance talk about what has changed since Detroit in this project. Great. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. All right, so recap since uh, KubeCon Detroit. So first, we've had quite a few re new releases in our three series, so 3.4, 3.5, and 3.6. We shipped quite a few new features, uh, better security, easier migrations, and we'll talk about those in a little bit here. Um, in, our two in our two series, we ship just critical fixes, uh, making sure that we keep up to date on those. Um, and we're also doing something where uh, kind of a lesson learned from our, our one series is really making sure we stay up from our, 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 our major dependencies. So um, we're going to, you know, you know, Envoy moves quickly, so we want to make sure we keep with that cadence. So you'll see us continuing to stay up to, to date with Envoy underneath the hood. So. Thank you for not emphasizing how painful that lesson was to learn. <laughs> yes. One Same with Golang and other other uh, critical dependencies for the project. So key new features that we've shipped uh, uh, just recently. So open telemetry tracing. Uh, that was a great partnership between one of our maintainers, Alice, and Paul. They worked together to get that shipped, uh, and, and, and we're really happy to have that. Uh, resolve name ports in Ingress. If so, if you are still using Ingress, and we'll talk about our 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 language here in a little bit, so you'll see that. But if you are using the Ingress resources, um, we, we got a help from Anton. He he was a first time contributor, so that was really great. Uh, direct TLS support for Ingress. We've added that non blocking ready listener. Again, thanks for Fabrizio and Tomas. That was a, a a good really helped, and they they were really patient with us, so we were we were happy on that one. <laughs> so, active upstream health checks. And we also added support for Git Ambassador v, V1. Um, this is to help reduce some of the migrations of folks that were coming from older clusters and from the, the Ambassador 1. Uh, this would make sense for, for folks that are just starting out and you're, you've already adopting uh, V3. We recommend you, you do V3 Alpha, the latest that you see in our docs. So. 
Um, so again, thanks to our community. So since KubeCon, we had 175 commits, 10 first-time contributors. Uh, we have 9,000 members in our Slack channel and uh, 4K GitHub stars. And again, just another shout out to our community and some, some, some of the folks that have recently um, submitted uh, pull requests and commits, Pierre, Paul, Anton, Dimitri, Tomas, Fabrizi. We really appreciate that. Any of them are here? Great. Yeah. And I'll hand it right. over to Flynn. So I said we'd come back to the whole self-service thing. And I'm going to emphasize again, this is self-service developer-centric and opinionated <laughs> configuration stuff. We talk about this every time we're doing this, and the reason is fairly simple. It's important. One of the things that gets glossed over a lot at KubeCon in particular is that Kubernetes is a means, it is not an end. There is nobody out there who runs Kubernetes solely so they can say that they're running Kubernetes. Everybody runs it because they are trying to get some other application to accomplish certain goals. And this is important. The self-service part of the self-service developer-centric opinionated part, the self-service part is about allowing your developers to achieve the goals more quickly by arranging it so that they don't have to be constantly waiting for other people to be able to get things done. The developer-centric part is about allowing the develop developers to achieve their goals more easily by providing them with configuration tools that are using a set of semantics that makes sense to an application developer. The opinionated part is about trying to provide straightforward mechanisms that make a lot of sense, as opposed to mechanisms that can accomplish absolutely everything but are ridiculously complex. In our world, this shows up by the set of CRDs that we did originally. We've got listeners that talk about what ports and protocols you're listening on. We've got hosts, which talk about host names, TLS certificates, things like that. We have mappings, which talk about taking chunks of the URL space and routing them through to specific services. All of these things could be expressed in a single resource, like the Ingress resource. But if you do it that way, then you tend to have multiple people getting stuck editing the same resource all the time which is painful, so we didn't do it that way. Another thing going on here is it is absolutely possible to have a single person going through and working with all of these resources and managing the whole configuration start to finish, but it is also possible to have, say, your developer crew worrying about request mapping while trusting the operations side of the world to worry about listeners and hosts and certificates and rate limits and auth services and, 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 and there's a bunch of stuff down there. This separation of roles, this separation of concerns, turns out to be a thing that really helps allowing people to get stuff done. Uh, we're gonna be coming back to this when Lance is talking about the Gateway API, because this is also a big deal there. Overall, this is one of those things where the self-service, you know, microservices 101, separating things this way and arranging it so that everybody can work independently in parallel all the time lets you get things done more quickly. It does require a lot of trust. The developer side of the world has to trust that the ops side of the world is maintaining the infrastructure correctly. Likewise, the ops side of the world has to trust that the developer side of the world can get their stuff done without destroying the cluster. It requires going both ways. It can be very uncomfortable for people who are just coming into this world, but it really is worth it. It's a good thing. Um, it's also worth pointing out, it requires trust, but it doesn't require blind trust. There are a bunch of tools available in Kubernetes that permit you to do this more safely. RBAC gives you guardrails. We're kind of fond of the kubectl sudo thing, which lets you mostly interact with a cluster in a way that's safe, and then when you need to, do stuff that's dangerous in an audited, controlled fashion. Um, you know, the declarative thing lets you fairly easily audit the world. It's fairly easy also to build layers on top of this with you know, GitOps, infrastructure as a service, CI, CD, all of those things give you ways that you can let people go forward quickly in parallel and still have some confidence that the world is not gonna to come to an end tomorrow. And all of this actually ends up tying back into some of the Gateway API stuff, which I will let Lance talk about. I'm giving him the hard part. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, who here has heard of the Gateway API? Who here has worked with it? Anybody? Okay, a lot of fewer hands. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna go quickly over it. And I, there's 
tons of talks here out there, so hopefully you're already catching them and that'll go really in depth in it. But we wanted to touch on it and kind of talk about how it compares to Emissary. You just saw the Emissary language and then kind of talk about where, it's, where we're going with it. So, so the Gateway API is a standard set of resources for service ne network networking. You can think of it as the successor to Ingress resource, uh, and it's community-driven. I think that's really important. It's being community-driven. It's coming from a lot of experience from other projects and trying to take all the lessons learned. Similar to Emissary, where we talked about self-service, developer-centric, developer-oriented, this is role-oriented. So it really looks at that, what we talked about, that developer and that trust between them and the platform operators as well. And in general, like I said, it takes, it's been taking learnings from projects like ours, Contour, and then the wider ecosystem of Kubernetes. Oh, before I go back, and check it out. There's a lot more content, obviously, on the, the, the website. So go ahead, and when you get here, download the slides, click on there, and, and read about it, and yeah, tons more. So earlier, we showed you how Ingress compared to the emissary language. And you can see we have our listener host and mapping. And you can see a similar um, thing in the gateway is where it's broken up, all the resources are broken up, broken up into individual uh, resources compared to the ingress, which was one large, one large uh, resource. And if we dive into them individually, you start with a gateway class. So the gateway class is similar to ingress uh, controller class, if you've worked with that before. And so it's saying what controller wants to listen to these resources and can handle them. Then. We say, what is the gateway? There's a gateway. And so this is similar to what you just saw of the host and listener, but they're kind of consolidated into a single resource here. So this is where you'll actually say what gateway class that you want to talk to. You'll say what protocol, uh, port number. If you want to have uh, DNS resolution here, this is wildcardexample.com. And if you want to terminate TLS certificate um, found in a secret. And then finally, similar to a mapping, we have an HTTP route. And so the HTTP route is going to give you the ability to shape that traffic. So traffic comes into your cluster, and it hits uh, 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 emissary, and it says, OK, where do we want to go? We want to go to, uh, when we see fooexample.com, we want to go to this backend ref, uh, quote, quote 80. And if we put them side by side, uh, or sorry, if we look at it like we did earlier, we said there's Jane, this developer, and she's really focused on her application. And she, she can go ahead and focus on HTTP routes, similar to Emissary, where you'd focused on mappings. And then there's the platform administrator that can focus on those, those cluster-wide things. And they'll focus on gateway class and gateway. So very similar, that separation of concerns. So now you're probably asking the fun question. Does Emissary Ingress support the Gateway API? And the answer is yes, but not really. So if you go out to our docs today, you will see, uh, you can search and you'll find the Gateway API on there, but it's a much, much older version of that. And so that's why we've been spending time getting familiar. We've been working with the Gateway API team. We've been working with Envoy Gateway to understand it better. And, um, and we want to see where it wants to go. And so. The other question you might be asking is, what about the V3 CRDs that we have and we, we just showed? Well, are those going away? Is the Gateway API going to replace them? Well, that's where we kind of actually, we want to hear from you guys. So what does that look like? And, you know, we've, we've, for people that have been familiar with MSRE Ingress and you've been using it for a long time, you're very familiar with our, our language. For folks that are new, you want to see the Gateway API. So do you see a hybrid of the two? Do you see it being, um, being a backwards translation? Do you see it more of a GitOps thing? These are things that we want to talk to the community about, see what you're interested in, and, and, and actually put that into the product. And we do have a Contrib Fest later, so we'd love to have you guys stop by or the OSS Pavilion and chat with us about that, and we'd love to hear more. Please. Um, so just out of summary here, um, emissary ingress is, focuses on self-service ingress because it's a great way to let everyone get things done faster. Uh, so if you're new to the Kubernetes world and to emissary, it's definitely something to look at if it, uh, um, when you're setting up your teams and how you want to operate, being able to focus on platform and then um, developers being able to focus on, on their piece as well. And it takes trust, but it works really well once you get it right. Um, we think it definitely starts to make sense to look at the Gateway API. And like I said, there's a ton of talks here that are going really far in depth in it. But we want to know what it's going to look like 
or what you guys would like to see it look like in emissary um we emissary input language that we just went over the host listeners all those things they're here to stay the, for the foreseeable future but we want to know how would it look with a gateway api in that and so we need your feedback and we would like to really work with you on that in the community all right so again, we just wanted to also say thanks to the community. Um, the, as you saw earlier in our slides, we, we had lots of contributors, lots of new contributors here. Um, and they've been really, really pivotal on some key features. And so we'd love for uh, folks here that want to get involved. Uh, like you said, we have a Contrib Fest later today at 4.30. So definitely stop on by. Or you can always catch us on Slack. Alice, one of our um, uh, other contributors is here at the conference, They're Flynn, maintainers. maintainers, sorry, yes, maintainers. And Flynn and myself, you can catch us on Slack um, or again at the OSS Pavilion. Um, for any contributors here, I see a few. So we just wanted to give a shout out for the tag um, contributor strategy. If uh, you're, you know, you're a maintainer and you're looking to um, get more involved in the Kubernetes CNCF world, um, go ahead and check this out. There's a link here. Um, and uh, has a lot of guides on how to contribute and, and whatnot. All right. Thanks. And then questions. questions. There's a microphone coming to you, I think. Is it working? Okay. Um, my name is Andre. I'm from London. Uh, I've been an active user of Ambassador Stack for years, and I was always confused between Ambassador Edge Stack and Emissary Ingress. Can you uh, elaborate on this a little bit? Because latest changes uh, vanishes the, the a bit uh, the border between them. Uh, can you speak up on this a little bit? Thank you. Happy. Um, so Emissary Ingress is the CNCF uh, project that we're here talking about today, and that was, uh, when said, 2001? Or, yeah, no, or sorry, 2021. It was <laughs> yeah. donated around, around that time. Yeah. <laughs> Age of myself. No. It was donated in around 2021, I think. The project got started in 2017, so it's been around for a while. Yeah. And so um, that is the open source project. And then Edge Stack, what you're talking about, is, is built on top of that. So it's added features like auth authentication, provides authentication service, rate limiting, and those types of things. So you want to add anything on it? Yeah. Emissary also has authentication and rate limiting and all that stuff. The big difference there is that Edge Stack provides you an implementation of the external services that are used for those. So Emissary has hooks to call out to an auth service and Edge Stack bundles an implementation of the auth service that does OAuth. Um, that separation where you've got Emissary as the open core of a larger commercial project is very, very likely to stick around. Um, I, it's always fun for me to deal with stuff because I don't work at Ambassador Labs anymore, but I'm fairly confident that Edge Stack isn't going away. Uh, it, would, it would surprise me a lot if that were to happen. Uh, Going forward, we do expect that where Emissary is currently built directly on top of Envoy, Emissary is probably going to shift to being built on top of Envoy Gateway. That makes a lot of sense. And then Edge Stack will continue to be built on top of Emissary, which is built on top of Envoy Gateway. And it's turtles all the way down. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. And then there's one over here. Uh, Ziad speaking from France. So thank you for the presentation. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> thank you for being here. A, a quick uh, question is uh, uh, about um, Envoy uh, plugins implementation mm -hmm. in uh, Immersy, especially uh, one uh, we look at to is um, the um, gRPC to HTTP REST to gRPC uh, transcoding, because you know the most of public API. They are REST API, and yeah. uh, the developers, we, we speak about the uh, developer's experience, uh, enjoy doing uh, gRPC microservices. So we really need uh, the envoy that already implemented uh, the gRPC transcoding to HTTP. So what your insight about this? Thank you. So the, the flip answer is, hey, PR is welcome. Um, 
obviously I'm being a little bit facetious about that one, but do you remember, wasn't there, uh, I feel like there was work that was done to start enabling that one, do you remember? GRPC web? Yeah. Yes. I thought it was already. Yeah. When you look to the code source, uh, there is something, but nothing raised. Yeah. Okay, so in that case, why don't I would like to talk to you a little bit more about that one because yeah. I thought that there was stuff already in there that could do this and if it is not what you're talking about I want to understand that thank you hello everyone hello hello hi there thanks so uh, the the scenario that I had was let's say the product that we have is distributing uh, MS3 gateway, but the customer's environment also has, let's say, uh, MS3 gateway installed, but different versions of CRDs, uh, different version of the product or project, let's say. Uh, in that case, obviously, we have a conflict because we want to install different versions of CRDs. So do you have any suggestions on how do we handle these scenarios? Thank you. You want that one? <laughs> I guess not. Um, recent emissaries have a component called APIX that is supposed to handle the translation for you between CRD versions. So I would encourage you to install the newer, it's a little tricky, In installing the newer version of emissary should allow translation for all of the older versions of the CRD that are already in the cluster. And that should do what you need. And just uh, as a follow-up, if I understand you correctly, you're talking about uh, different versions of emissary running. So there's different versions of the the, the actual CRD itself, not um, not the uh, not our CRD version. So is that what you're referring to? Yeah, emissary CRD. Oh, okay. So you are referring to that. I wasn't sure if you were talking about just the different versions. Um, uh, so Kubernetes itself doesn't allow you to version in the sense of yeah, how eh, do I word that? Things get really tricky if you're using a version of Kubernetes that uses the old, like V1 beta one custom resource definition resource. I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> Kubernetes itself. Do you remember what version this changed in? Anybody? Shane? 22. I'm looking at Shane because 1.22. Yeah. So in Kubernetes 1.22, support for the custom resource definition beta version went away and you had to use v1 proper and a lot of the rules changed and if you're trying to deal with older versions of kubernetes and multiple versions of project crds your life is going to be miserable don't do that upgrade your version of kube um, if you're using a newer version of kubernetes so you're using the v1 custom resource definition then the newer versions of emissary like emissary 3 and higher should be able to deal with the problem that you're talking about where you need to deal with multiple versions of the emissary CRDs. Did that, I hope that answered the question instead of making it less clear. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, um, for service mesh integrations with uh, Console Connect and Istio, um, how do you guys use Linkerd? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, with them starting to support um, <laughs> um, the gateway API as well, how do you guys see emissary ingress fitting into that picture? Do we have emissary routing only to non-service mesh services, or you know, what type of architecture would you guys see this evolving into? The actual answer to that question is go and hang out with the Gamma Group, which is worrying about gateway API and service mesh, and. Um, in the bright, shiny future that we all look forward to, then we will have ingress controllers and service meshes that are living in perfect harmony, configured with the Gateway API, and everything will be wonderful, and we'll all sing Kumbaya, and the Middle East will be peaceful, and yeah. Um, I don't actually know how long it'll take to get there, but it's a thing that's, yeah, it's definitely a thing that we're paying attention to, because it doesn't actually make a lot of sense to do gateway API and not think about how to play nicely with service meshes as well. There's, there is, in all seriousness, a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of thought going into that in the Gamma group. Some of the, some of the concerns you run into there are deeply, deeply fascinating. That's, that's a good word, right? <laughs>
Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.